I'm doing this out of nostalgia. Anyway, throughout history, there's always been power grabs, basically, amongst the populace. A lot of times we use, especially um, us right-wing anti-status, we like to cite democracy as an example. Group A voting to take resources of Group B. However, this has always been evident in terms of <clears throat> nationalism, especially national socialism, communism, and fascism, and a lot of other stuff like this. There's always been this ideal of the populace to uh, basically take resources from one another. I'm not just resources, but I think a bigger word, a more abstract and functional word, because abstract words are good. Abstract words describe things that I think more concrete, more nounish verbs. Nounish verbs? What the fuck? Nounish words um, fail to describe. Um, and representation is one of those words. Representation is a good word to describe this because, for example, in communism, communism usually starts off because of the initial group that wants to take resources from the other group, which in this case was the proletariat, and they're trying to take resources from the bourgeois mode of the populist, that group. And so, it was initially based off of that, and then totalitarianism came off, and because of totalitarianism, that initial desire became the main basis, and anything ahead wasn't represented. Ironically, when <clears throat> communism was slowly dying out, and the new leader desired a little bit more privatization, the other groups were pissed. So that initial representation and desire still hasn't died out at that time. What else? National Socialism, also known as Nazism, if you're like that. That came from the desire of representation amongst German nationalists who were considered the real Germans and everything else that wasn't represented was the enemy and that was a desire for representation amongst the populace that was a uh, internal conflict of power grab and it was a slightly different one because instead of outright denying anything that isn't the initial desire the initial desire was cultivated, it was propagated, and everything else was kind of censored. <clears throat> so those are three examples I was going to use. Um, I was going to go to talk about fascism, but then I realized I'm a dumbass, so... What do you learn from this? A lot of other different modes of government and governance, besides representative democracies, do have the ability to harness populist conflict and what many would call structural Marxism. But I'd like to call it just populism. The idea of one group going up against the elites. Populism even though it's not the same as statism, statism is more like you thinking that the elite knows what's best for us and then trusting that. Populism is more on the side of, it's not statism, but it helps statism. It's not anti-statism, but it's not the statist idea. Oftentimes it complements the statist idea because it requires state action along with the action of those aggressive people. Keep in mind, 
It's not just a political group that needs to be corrupt to fuck everything up. It also has to mean the frustration of the people. If that makes sense. I know I've stuttered a lot in this video, but I'm kind of rusty on this shit. And I was never that good to begin with, so... Peace out, guys.